This is Plus Politics. Now, the Social Economic Rights and Accountability Project, CEREP, has taken its asset declaration case against the President Muhammadu Buhari and Vice President Yemil Shimajo to the Court of Appeal. The group seeks to make public content of the asset declaration forms filed by Buhari or Simbajo, as well as the 36 state governors and their deputies. Serap had recently met a setback after the Federal High Court in Lagos threw out a suit. But before the, that discussion comes up, Quara, Ogun Kano, Edo, and Oyo states have failed to disclose the amount they had spent on COVID-19 tests. Factors such as civil servants not being at work due to the lockdown and tests still being conducted have, have been named as reasons for this. Joining us to discuss this is Tokumbo Momoni, Executive Director of Serap via phone. And still with us for this conversation is political analyst Ihechuku Ibeji. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us on the show. It's a pleasure. Now, Kwara Ogun, Kano Edo, and Oyo states on Sunday failed to disclose the amount they had spent on COVID-19 tests. And as you can recall already, there's an ongoing investigation and audit of state government agencies and personnel who are said to have spent the COVID-19 fund from the government and private individuals. Mr. Mumuni, what exactly do you think is going on here? Hello? Yes, Mr. Mumuni. Yes. Let me get the question again. I like, with all of this happening, then the state government that have refused to give account of the spending of the COVID-19 fund, what exactly do you think is going on here? And again, given the light, there is an ongoing investigation already. You see, in a democracy, we cannot pretend to be battling health issues. And we use that as a basis not to be accountable. So we believe that um, whatever is expended on the tackling of the COVID-19 pandemic must be fully accounted for. That is what is what makes sense in a democracy. That is what makes sense for the purpose of transparency and accountability. For those that have failed or that have refused to be accountable, to be transparent in the spending of the money allotted for the taking care of of the COVID-19 pandemic, they must be brought to account. They must be made to be, to be transparent. That is what is important. Hey, Chuku. Now, prior to this time, Nigerians have all, always expressed their doubt about the government possibly using the COVID-19 intervention fund and donation as means to enrich themselves. What do you say to these allegations by the public? Look, <laughs> um, um, I don't know. I, I think that um, I think that in this country we need to understand the fact that every action that is taken by government and public officials is open and akin to scrutiny, and they must account for every part of this. At some point in time, Nigerians have come out to say that these palliatives have not reached them. All right, and this is just one part of the palliatives. And now we come to a point where the states are being asked to account for money that were expended in, in, the, in the process of this, and some of them are giving excuses of civil servants not being at work. But guess what? A state like Lagos has come out to give account for amount used to test its, 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 uh, its citizens. So how can you then put that side by side with another state that's saying that it's not able to do that? Every state must be accountable. Every state must account for the amounts that are used because even when you say that some of the states have said that the people are not the ones um, who are paying, guess what? They are public funds. As long as they are public funds, they were budgeted for, approved for, they must be accounted for. And the state governments and the state governments must come to equity with clean hands. And that's just what um, the whole thing is all about. It's a Mr. very straightforward... Yeah. Uh, Mr. Uh, Bomuni, uh, there seems to be a perpetual culture of impunity and lack of accountability on the sides of public office holders, where they feel they are not entitled, they are not responsible to give an account of funds of monies within their covers as public servant. Why has this culture trended for so long and how do we begin to address and deconstruct such a culture of impunity and unaccountability in our public service? Yes. The truth of the matter is that um, 
we have been in government, they have pretended as if they are running things without anybody that will cause them, cause them to question. Now, the only basis for any government not to be accountable is for people of Nigeria not to demand persistently and consistently accountability and to raise accountability issues. So the only way we can deconstruct what they have in their brain is to continue with persistency and consistency to demand that they must be accountable no matter what they believe. So Nigerians have to insist that they must be accountable. And if they refuse to be accountable, we have to use the instrumentalities of Nigerian law to call them to account. Because the provision of section 15, subsection 5 of the Nigerian constitution says the primary and fundamental purpose of government at all levels must be the welfare, safety, and security of the Nigerian people. And when you now start spending money of the Nigerian people in a manner that Nigerian people cannot question you, then you are not living our life to your constitutional responsibility. That should not be allowed. We have to continue to demand accountability and transparency on a persistent and consistent basis. Right. Ian yeah, Chuku, um, listening to Mr. Momoni now, we have to continue to demand accountability on a consistent basis. Now, many might get the fact that the system in itself doesn't work and people control the system. And if we have a system that works, then all of these checks, the processes, the monitoring, you know, specific accountability processes we were put in place to curtail issues like this. Now, how would you rate so far the accountability process and monitoring as regards COVID-19 intervention funds and donations so far by, by well-meaning individuals, corporate organizations, the federal government, state government, when it comes to spending, do you think the process has been, as it should be, effective enough to put checks and balances against such things? Um, Benny, I must, I must confess to you that one of the things that uh, determines and defines uh, a structural and well, uh, a, 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 well, a clear path to show accountability is information. So, and once again, I'm going to use, um, say, Lagos as a basis for comparison. Now, maybe not comparison in that manner, but as a basis. At every point in time, we were regaled with information of what was going on, all right? And there was a press conference to let us know exactly what was happening and what was not happening. Now, in a situation whereby states don't give you information. What do you, what do you depend on to give you such accountability? You need to begin to look at certain agencies that have been created both internally and externally to nudge such states and such governments to, account, to be accountable. That is one of the reasons why when you call an EFCC for me, an ICPC for me, right? In certain, in certain situations that concern public office holders, I want to see the end of such matters because we do not have a perfect system, all right? But the result of any investigation or any probe for accountability gives us or inches us closer to a perfect system. So I will support such bodies, right, in doing such investigation to find out exactly what went on because it's true of the case that it wasn't a foolproof system, both in the, in, the, in the deployment of the palliative funding and in the deployment of uh, the handling of the COVID or COVID matters um, in, in, in a whole. And that is why it is important. In fact, no, it is crucial that the states must come out and they must be accountable for every step 
involved in this COVID-19 uh, 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 treatment, be it testing, be it treatment of citizens, whatever test, step it is, they must provide the Nigerian populace um, with that level of accountability. And I, and I, and I would implore um, anybody that is involved in such investigations, be it the anti-corruption agencies, be it the internal audit systems, be it bodies like Sarah who would require or who would request for such, for such um, 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 things to be done, to go ahead and push it. Because it is by so doing that we'll get, we'll get it right at the end of the day. Thank All you right. very much. All right. Um, Mr. Adekun Tokumbo, let's come to a more front burner um, issue right now as it concerns your group, that's Serap. Um, you, you took, you took um, the asset declaration case against the president, Muhammadu Buhari, Vice President Yamil Simbajo, as well as 36 state governors and their deputies to court, the Court of Appeal. Yes. Now, this was after the Federal High Court in Lagos threw out your initial suit. Yes. Can, can you tell us what informed the Federal High Court's decision in the first instance? I think the, the, I think the basis for the Federal High Court to rule against us, the argument of the court is that there is no law published or made after the enactment of the Freedom of Information Act that stipulates, maybe at National Assembly, that stipulates how we can assess the information. But our opinion is that the lower court, the federal court, deliberately erred in law to take that position. Recall that the Freedom of Information Act was made in 2001. For the court to now say a law does not exist as to the directives that we must take when we want to access information is not correct because the Freedom of Information Act came subsequently to give the, direct, the directive and the guideline as to how we can access the information. Yes, Mr. Mumuni. We believe in yes, Mr. Mumuni. Sorry, to, sorry yes. to interject. Yes, in the light of the FOI, the, the Freedom of Information Act, didn't the yes. Federal High Court, before throwing out your suit, didn't they put that into consideration, the existence of the FOI? You see, when arguments are converged on both sides, a judge, by virtue of his position, has a right to rule in favor of one party or the other. And that is why anybody that is affected by that judgment can take it up at the Court of Appeal. All right, now you've appealed, appeal, now you've appealed we, to the Court of Appeal. What, what, are yes. your what are your expectations here? We believe that three wise men will look into the matter on the basis of what we have conversed before the court, at the high, at, at the high court, and look critically into the matter, and we believe that we will will get justice on this matter at the Court of Appeal. Executive Director Serap, Mr. Momunia Detokumo, thank you very much for joining us and for shedding it's, light on the issue. It's a pleasure. Thank and you also, very much. Ia Chuku Ibeji, thank you for staying with us all through and for your insightful contribution. Thank you so much, Bini. It's, it's, absolutely, it's absolutely been a pleasure. This is Plus Politics. Thank you for staying with us. We'll take our Plus report now, and when we return, I'll be giving you my take. Stay with us. The People's Democratic Party in Edo State has called on the residents of the state to reject the All Progressives Congress, APC, in the upcoming Edo State governorship elections. The state PDP... The state PDP chairman, Anthony Aziegbemi, said the APC government has left the state worse off than it met it in the last four years. 
He spoke to Plus TV Africa in Benin City, the Ado State, where he stated that available statistics show that the lives of the residents in the state have not been improved as promised by the APC-led government. The country under APC has been very disastrous. A government, a party that came to government with propaganda of wanting to repair everything, giving the sing song of PDP government was bad and they did that change. Change was their slogan. Of course, when they came in, there was changes, and but not changes for good anyway. Changes for the worse. And for what Nigeria is today, no discerning-minded Nigerian will want. Uh, APC to come back to government and the only way we can start giving them the red card to park and go it will start from the local election because our politics is local. We are really in very serious economic uh, crisis that broke out early this year has just exposed has opened all our fault lines so you can a combination of all this will tell anybody that, that looks at the data, that looks at the analysis to say, we cannot afford to give our lives to APC going forward. If we do, our GDP that is about $10 billion now will come to like $5 billion. Because they, 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 they have a pattern of bringing down all the economic indices that should, they, should, they should be increasing. So they, 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 lack, they lack the wherewithal to create wealth. This is my take. There is no gain saying that the utterances of the president of Mieti, Allah Kauto Hore, is a danger to our national security and inter-ethnic harmony as this poses a grave threat to our national security and must be confronted by all Nigerians since it would seem that the group's statement is a threat to every other ethnicity. I can fathom the idea that some group of people will traverse the length and breadth of the Federal Republic of Nigeria causing chaos through bloody violence for land grabs and it comes up that the central government does, does nothing to bring them to justice. Utterances suggesting insurrection and rebellion to constituted authorities and our unity should be confronted with the full weight of the law and the federal might, which is sacrosanct. President Mahmoud Buhari shouldn't be seen or perceived to be an embodiment of inaction and systemic inefficiency by doing nothing to show up Nigeria's national security, which has become so endangered. Nigeria's national security has become so jeopardized as thousands of Nigerians are slaughtered by all kinds of freelance armed hoodlums and terrorists and it's become a must now for the government to do something and to put an end to this killings. Nigerians deserve better. Since the outbreak of the coronavirus, a lot of money has been donated and raised in Nigeria to fight and curtail the spread of the virus. Earlier, the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, announced that it has set out a number of measures to tackle the impact of coronavirus, including establishing a fund of 50 billion naira to support the country's economy, targeted at households and micro and small enterprises. The federal government and states have been approving and doling out billions of naira for the fight of COVID-19 too. Interestingly, the private sector is also in the game of donating huge funds. But the question remains how judicious it's a fund deployed to address the problem for which it was donated amid the increasing suffering in the land following the lockdown. The ongoing probe instituted by the federal government anti-grab agency, the Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offenses Commission, and the Office of the Accountant General of the Federation is indeed finding light in the darkness. Nigerians are asking questions over the use of the huge donations towards the fight against COVID-19 because they have seen situations where individuals become richer overnight by virtue of handling distribution of relief materials. If people can divert food and pharmaceutical supplies meant for the internally displaced persons, the IDPs, there is no limit to what they can do. To this end, I will suggest that the findings from the investigations and audit of state governments, agencies and personnel who spend the COVID-19 funds from the government and private individuals should be stated and all the states and governors involved and found guilty should be publicly published with, without any sacred cows. And that's my take. Thank you for staying with us. More interesting conversations on PLOS Politics returns tomorrow evening, same time. Have a great evening. My name is Benny Ock.